and I have a picture, a black and white picture, of this man carrying a banner on these grounds many, many years ago in support of women's rights and women's lives. He was, and I think probably will always be, the strongest, loudest, and most clear <laughs> voice in this state capitol building. This man was vocal about pro-choice. He was vocal about our rights. He had the strength and the courage to do that. And he was standing up against a lot of people who would say, oh, I can't do that. That's like kind of bad. But he didn't. He didn't. And you can tell he didn't because he's here with us today. And he has already been to the microphone, but I wanted to do this because it's very, very important to me that he came to join us one more time. So with that, I will give you Senator Ken Jacob. Security. The right to privacy, fair pay, free choice. I have been asked to speak today to represent a man's point of view. Those four principles are the principles of real men. Real men are marching with you today. Lesser men, lesser men want to put a bust of Rush Limbaugh in this building. Well, I want to promise you there's a better place for that bust. Maybe Maybe he could put it in the bank that he bought with his campaign funds. But maybe we could put it behind the Capitol in the river. I went to college from 1967 to 1971. For those of you who are old enough to remember, that's about the time that the birth control pill first hit the streets. It was a revolutionary change for women. I remember before the pill and since the pill, the thought that there are people in this country who want to go back to those times, maybe they belong in that river too so they can float downstream. I also remember during those years that abortion, freedom of choice, the right of privacy did not exist. In 1973, Roe versus Wade came along. The world is a better place since that decision than before that decision. I lived. I lived through those days. I saw family members go through that before it was safe and legal. It's better now. And I want to say something else. From now until the end of time, the decision about what happens to anybody's body is their choice. Sandra Reeves is here. We served in the House for 12, 14 years together. And I want to say something about the women that I have served with. They are better legislators than the men. And you know why? Because it's so hard for them to get here. And so once they get here, they have much more to offer. So, Rebecca, I look forward to serving with Rebecca. McClanahan. This
Capitol, these people who occupy this building now, they're not smart enough to take care of this building. If you go over to the west side of the building, you'll notice it's crumbling. Well, I want to promise you that it's not going to crumble beneath the weight of a bust of Rush Limbaugh. If I have to personally pick up that bust and carry it to the river, I promise you, I will. Now, that's a real man talking. I am so proud of the things that happened during my 22 years here. I am so proud that I was the first senator that they had to cut off debate. And one of those issues was the partial truth abortion issue. And I want to tell you that I stood for five straight days. Now I know there are many people who will be elected who will stand with me in 2013. I can speak for days, I just said that. But I also, I also want to say hey and give a big hug to women who marched with me. I wish you all would have been here then. There were 10,000 women here. As far as there's green, all you could see was ladies. And I'll tell you what, if things don't change here in this capital, there's not going to be 10,000 women who speak. There's going to be two and a half million women who live in the state of Missouri who are going to vote and throw these people out of office. Let's kick them out. Let's kick them out. Let's get rid of them. I'll tell you, I've been out of this building for eight years now. Eight years. I have to run again because I just cannot tolerate what happens here every day. It's amazing. It's amazing to me that the positions that the people here today take, I'm just shocked. You know, all my political life, I kept talking about the millennium. What's going to happen in the year 2000? I never would have believed that in 2001, this place could be taken over by a mob of gangsters who are nothing but self-serving, who want to feather their own nest, and they don't care about people at all. They need to be thrown out of office. Just remember that real men are marching with you. Thank you very much.